Hey guys, it's me Philip. Welcome to the second part of the wooden floor tutorial. I know it's been a while, you know, work, personal project and recently NFTs kind of consumed most of my time and there just wasn't any time left for some, you know, YouTube shenanigans. However, I'm back and uh, we will start where we left off in the first part. Uh, in this part we will create a diffuse and roughness map for the height map we did last time. And uh, yeah, then I will show you how to set up the material in uh, C4D and Octane Render and uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. Uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this video. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Let's get right into it. Don't judge my hair. All the barbershops are closed in Prague and have been for months. So yeah, yeah, there was nothing I could do. Right, now we can do it. All right, so we are back in Substance Designer. I opened up my PureRef with a bunch of references. This is the one that we used in the first part. I also added some more you know, like different looks, so we can uh, kind of like see which one we prefer while working on the diffuse map for this one. Before we get into roughness and diffuse, I would like to tweak the texture of the wood a little bit because the grain seems to be a little too smooth and perfect for my liking. We're gonna do that using directional warp. We're going to plug it just before uh, placing our uh, wood texture in through the multi-material blend. So if you hold shift and press on uh, all these outputs, you can drag them into this input. Fortunately, by default, it will think that it's color, so it will mess everything up. But once we plug it into grayscale input, we will get it working again. And now to get a little bit of that wood grain because it seems very smooth and perfect we need a little bit of like noise in the grain we can just use this directional uh, noise and uh, plug it into the noise input and now we get something like this which is obviously like way too strong so we're gonna dial it down to like what 4.5 uh, I think 3 is 3 is good now we are ready to start working on the roughness map. So we will start by grabbing histogram range and we will plug our distance node from flood fill and we will tweak the position to be I mean, we can we can we can keep it in the middle for now and when we drag range down it will flatten the range of the values and if you drag it up it will broaden it so basically it works kind of like contrast so this is like very contrasted this is like very low and to our like zero contrast so we are gonna keep it i don't know like 0.1 now you're going to grab some grunges we're going to grab grunge 07 and grunge 08 we will use these grunges as like base textures for our roughness variation. Now we can create output blend node and now we will just roughness click on view output in 3D and we can now see how it affects our roughness. The preview is of course accelerated by Nvidia GPUs. So now we see our histogram range in roughness. Now if we bring this up, we get a lot more roughness variation. And if we move the position, we either get way glossier or more diffuse look of the floor. I think somewhere in the middle is pretty good for now. Obviously, if you look at these, you can get like very shiny versions or more kind of like diffuse with like blurry reflections. So, you know, it's up to you which style are you looking, you know, looking to create. I think we'll, you know, go for like some generic medium. So in terms of the range, uh, obviously the tiles wouldn't have so much uh, difference between them because like, you know, if they would generally look sort of similar-ish 
in terms of their roughness. So I think that maybe point one. That looks pretty good. Maybe we could go a little bit down. Maybe like point four. Yeah, I think I think that's nice. Now we will start introducing some of the grunges into our roughness map. Overlay is is pretty good mode to use for for this sort of stuff because it allows you to layer both the brighter and darker values of the texture or like the grunge in this case. You know, it's always better to do it in smaller increments rather than huge ones because obviously this looks weird. Uh, so maybe like 0.1 could be pretty good value to start. Obviously, like a lot of this is just tweaking. Uh, you know, sometimes I work on a texture and then I find out that it doesn't look, you know, brilliant when in actual render. So I kind of go like back and forth and do a little bit tweaking. Yeah, I think this is pretty good for now. Pretty good. Uh, if we look at our map, we don't have any sort of definition of the wood grains, of the chipped edges, or even the dents between the planks. So we're gonna fix that. And we will always grab what we need from this bottom thread and just plug it in and layer it in this upper layer. So now we're gonna grab this chipped edges and we are going to plug it into our top. Uh, into our like roughness thread. So we'll bring in blend node. We'll actually grab invert grayscale because we want this to be white and the rest to be dark so we can uh, screen it on top of our map because these areas would be rougher than th these uh, the areas in between generally. So invert it. And now we can plug it in and use, you can use either screen or max, kind of like the text you're working with. In this case, I think it doesn't really change much. S screen will add the value on top of the value while max will just keep it the value it is and just like uh, let the brighter values of this map be visible. So now you see that we don't get, as, as these dents are not as shiny anymore and they are more diffuse, which is exactly what we want. So now we're going to do the same for our wood texture, because obviously with these dents in the wood grain, they would generally be slightly more diffuse than the rest, because they would be like on a lower level than the surface of the wood, and thus there would be like dirt and uh, gunk <laughs> building up. So. Let's grab another blend node. We will grab our wood texture and plug it in here. Of course, we need to invert it again. So invert grayscale. Oh, you know, what? we could actually grab levels. I think they would be better in this case because we need to invert it. But we also will need to tweak the levels a little bit. So the levels will provide more flexibility in that regard. So when we go into our levels, we will invert it by flipping the black and white slider. And now we can kind of like clip it to look just to get some of these like dents. Green it again. Now you can see that we're getting these little streaks of more diffuse areas, which I think look pretty cool. So we can dial those down a little bit, maybe like 0.5. Now we will do the same thing with our edgeware to get a little bit extra, extra detail on some of these edges and maybe a little bit of like more of the, this like grain definition on the edges of the tiles. We actually don't need to invert this one because it's already exactly as we need it. We'll just add screen and dial it down a lot. So maybe like 0.25 something. Maybe it'll even a little bit less. This feels like too much. So now if you look at it, we get like this way more sort of like interesting reflections of the surface. 
see we get these like nice chips and every everything looks much much more believable this way of course we need to plug it in first <laughs> But yeah, now we should get a little bit more of these and they're like, you know, and I, I think it looks pretty good. Now we will do the same for the dents and scratches. We don't need to flip those uh, or like invert those as well. So we'll just plug it in and just screen it. Doesn't need to be this wrong, maybe 0.75, maybe even 0.65. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now we'll grab another blend and just pluck those scratches in. We don't even need to mask these scratches here because th this was for the height map, which provided like some nice uh, depth uh, values. But in this case, we can just gr grab these and I think that will work just fine as it is. See, now we get these nice scratches. They might be a bit too strong right now, but... Now, another thing I kind of like to do with the roughness maps is to add curvature. Curvature Sobel. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. It's Sobel. Sobel? Sobel? Oh, I don't know. And we will plug our normal map into it. And we'll keep it at OpenGL. And this way we get like curvature of our current height map. And while well, I'm not pretty sure that it's not like the best way of doing this, but it fit, I kind of like that it adds a little bit of like that extra pop to the to some of these edges and to this overall structure. Now, if we look at the map, we see that it's uh, it has like middle gray and then like darker and brighter values. W what we need to do is to grab levels and sort of like clip the values to just those that we need. And just by dragging it up like this, we get these. And you see it kind of like uh, outlines these, you know, the dents and even some of the scratches a little bit and the wood grain. Okay, that's way too much. Maybe like 0.2. We can even tweak the intensity a little bit. Or maybe we can keep it at 0.2. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Now, we still have this additional dirt, so or like grunge. So now I sometimes like to, you know, experiment and see if it... Because what I like about these is that there is like this directional sort of like scratches and it looks almost like if somebody, you know, you know, like uh, danced on the floor or something. Uh, so, you know, I just want to try if it, you know, if it adds something to it or if it's just too much like after all with these like all these grunges and noises it's more about trying to kind of like break up the default look and kind of like get something that you're happy with yeah i think i think this looks pretty good so we can keep it in there okay so now that i'm looking at it again i feel like when all these layers are layered up that the edges might be a bit too rough so I'm going to go and dial down this initial one a little bit. Yeah, I think that's much better. And yeah, I think this is pretty good. I think we can now try to add a little bit more range to it. So, you know, we get a tiny bit more variation. Oh, well, maybe that's too much variation to be honest i think maybe just point 0.1 is good okay yeah so i think that this you know we can call this roughness map finished all right now we can start working on the diffuse map uh we will start by grabbing a gradient map and we're gonna map random color picked values from you know one of these and we will map them on top of these values we got from our uh, flood fill. 
or like flood fill to grayscale. And then we start layering more, you know, stains, damage and dents using pretty much the same technique, but just, you know, with color. And yeah, we will, we might add some more, you know, variation with some grunges. We will start by grabbing gradient map. Oh no. God damn it. So we start by getting a gradient map and we will plug our distance node into it. We, we need to decide which one of these we want to kind of like get close to. I, I think this one is pretty good. It's kind of our original reference. So I, I think it's pretty okay. So l let's go with that one. So we'll open our gradient editor and click big gradient and kind of like slide over it which will get us like these this selection of colors from the line we just drew yeah we get something like this uh of course you can get in and start like tweaking it or uh, you know manipulating it but i think that this is you know it's probably not like perfect perfect there might be a little bit too much color variation right now but i think that it's a solid base for you know for what we need we will start with the chipped edges and also the dents between the planks so we will grab a blend node grab a uniform color we'll plug the uniform color in the top input our gradient map in the bottom input and now we will grab the chipped edges plug those in obviously we need the inverted ones so now we get this separation between the tiles obviously it's not as prominent in these uh but you know i think that in this case it's just fine uh we can grab levels and edit the chipped edges i will grab a new these ones from the bottom we will invert them and now you can kind of like make it a little bit tighter if you look there isn't like that big of a gap in our case we have pretty big gaps between the planks so i think that it's you know reasonable to have them slightly more prominent but obviously we don't need that these like chipped edges to kind of like really seep into the plank so yeah i think something like this looks quite okay now we'll grab another blend and with this blend we will plug in our wooden grain we will copy and paste the levels we have here and plug this here and this in here now we will grab a another blend texture because you know to get a little bit more variation we can use for instance we can grab transform 2d and rotate this noise 90 degrees and and now we will mix two like brown brownish grayish colors that we will plug into the top input and get some more definition of the grain now we can actually move this a little bit up so it's not like this so there is not it's not so messy you know, one of these maybe one of these Okay, so this one is a little bit too kind of orangey. Yeah, I think this is better. Yeah, this, this looks pretty good. We can even tile it a little bit more. Now, if we look at this, we we, are, we start to get these little bits of grain information in there. So we need to tweak of course we as we as you can see this these are really like way too different for what we kind of need so we could either go in and sort of like clean this gradient a little bit or we can just grab hsl node so now we we are getting something like this and 
it looks fine, but maybe it's a bit too like brown. So maybe we need to get a little bit grayer values. And this feels like there is a little bit too too many colors, so we can try to get something less messy. Maybe a little bit more wouldn't. That's way too many. So what I'm looking for is so we don't get like such a huge uh, differences between the colors. So you get, yeah, maybe something like this. There's these black ones, which I don't like. I mean, obviously you could kind of like do the gradient manually and it might be a bit less of a pain in the butt, but I'm already, I already, <laughs> Yeah, so I think this is pretty solid gradient pick. We can probably delete this color because it's a bit too dark. We can introduce some more darker values like this. Okay, so I think this looks pretty good. This, get rid of this. Okay, so now I think we have much better base for what we are trying to do. Okay, and now we're getting some of these, like, a little bit of the grain is introduced into our floor texture. Of course, we could still go in and kind of, like, tweak this a little bit. Because oh, all this seems a bit too brown still. Okay, so I think something like this is pretty good. We can go back here and try tweaking this a little bit. Maybe cut off the blacks a little. Ah, we get something like this. I mean, it's not perfect, but I think that the overall vibe is sort of there. Now we're going to add another blend node. Now we're going to grab this edgeware and we can plug this black, well maybe not the black one, maybe we can grab HSL and since it's, since it's this edge, edgeware would be more kind of like you see how it's a little bit brighter in some areas, I'm not sure if these are like the best references to show you see there is like a little bit of like these chipped edges have like a little bit of the top coat and there's like these little bits of like missing color or like slight desaturation towards the edges so we can we can try to replicate that with this by using HSL on the, and you see we get this, these nice sort of, this nice look around the edges, which really helps with the realism I found, because like as you would use the floors, they would get uh, a little bit more used and kind of like the protective layers of like liqueur and stuff would get worn and yeah I think this looks pretty nice so let's go with that now for the dents we are going to use the same thing because once again the dents would remove the t the coating layer on the floors and would introduce these more like natural wood layer that's underneath. Now, it doesn't need to be very prominent, just like, you know, a little bit goes a long way. And the same for scratches. Yeah, I think this looks pretty good. Brilliant. So, now we're going to grab another blend. And we can in enhance the grain of the wood a little bit let's copy and paste this level these levels 
and we will kind of like try to get some more grain definition on top of this because right now we're kind of like losing the grain in some places uh which is which is fine but you know if you look at the floor there is like more consistent grain structure throughout the tiles and the planks so i'm not sure if it's even called planks but <laughs> so we gonna do that using our uh, curvature but we need to do it before we start applying this sort of like uh edgeware so we have to go a little bit back and start right after we apply the original wood grain and now we can create another version of this with our with hsl so this is way too much obviously but we should also invert this because we kind of want to get these in the, in the version of what we had before these dents in the in, in the middle and we will set it to multiply and now we're getting all this lovely grain in there obviously this is like way 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 too harsh but we're even getting these like nice little lines that are kind of like broken into these little islands you know as you can see in the reference obviously the like the wood grain isn't a perfect match of the reference because we would need to kind of like uh, do more different variations of the texture and see, you know, and kind of like do a bit more uh, R&D on how to kind of like get the nice distribution of these different textures and all that stuff. But I think, you know, we are close enough for it to be, you know, okay. We can grab another transformation 2D. And, you know, I'm not sure if it's even visible, but, you know, it's nice to kind of, like, add some more variation to it. Yeah, I think this is pretty, pretty, pretty reasonably close. So now we're just going to plug it into our main thread. We'll grab output. And I think we have pretty solid floor light right there. Maybe it could be a little brighter so we can get levels and kind of like add a little bit more color correction to it. Obviously not that much, but... But you see, this is what I'm talking about. It, it looks pretty washed out in this preview, but, you know, it, it will look way different in Octane with different lighting. So it's always good to kind of like try it in the engine you will be using before calling it a day and moving forward with other stuff you need for the scene. And yeah, also one more thing that I'm kind of noticing right now is that I think that there should be a tiny bit more roughness difference around the edges of the individual tiles. So let's quickly do it. We will start with our I think the edgeware would probably be a good place to start, so let's grab that. We will grab blur, plug it into the blur, set the quality to 1 so we don't get any artifacts. Now we'll grab directional, uh, you can actually grab multi-directional warp and plug our wood grain into it. So it's not just blurry, but we get like some additional sort of texture in it. I think this looks pretty okay. And now we will just grab a blend node and add it to our thread and we set it to screen. And now we get this sort of like these slightly more worn edges than we would normally get. You know, you can see it refreshes quite quickly, which is great. Uh, it's because like algorithmic tools, they support acceleration through GPUs and NVIDIA our sponsor for this video and uh, it works really great in Substance Designer because like some of these calculations especially if you have you know more complex node trees like the recalculations could really take a toll on your computer so it's great that you know it's much faster with GPU acceleration and yeah it's just just great okay so I think now we're ready to export our textures out maybe let's just dial this down a little bit 
because it seems like it's way too strong. So maybe like 0.3. We're just looking to get like a little bit of that. Maybe we can level it out a tiny bit to get more of a contrasty look. So let's try to clip it like this. We don't need, need it to seep too much into the tile. Okay, that's brilliant. I think that looks pretty, pretty good. And before we jump into C4D, uh, I just wanted to show you how you can use iRay renderer in Substance Designer that is uh, supported by NVIDIA GPUs. So you can get much nicer previews inside of Substance Designer if you desire to. So if you go to Renderer and switch, you can switch between OpenGL and iRay. And you can see that you get these like nice, nice highlights and reflections, which are far more accurate. You can see that it's very, you know, it's pretty much instant. So that's all because of the GPU support. And yeah, it's it's really a cool way to kind of like preview the material in higher quality. Uh, if you don't want to, you know, go all the way to Octane or, you know, Maya or 3ds Max or whatever you're using and trying it out there, this can give you like a better idea of how the material actually looks. So now we are back in C4D. We will create universal material. We will create a plane add the material to it and now in our node editor we will drag in image texture we need to set the metallic to zero we will now bring in the roughness map we can set it to float because that way it won't take up so much vram on your gpu and we will plug in uh, height into a displacement node obviously if you don't want to use displacement you can use the normal map but in this case and generally in most of my scenes I use the height map instead now we set the displacement to 4k we can set the level to 0.5 point this means that the displacement will sort of like the values darker than middle gray will go will push down and the and values brighter than middle gray will push up okay so once we set up our displacement we can start rendering i'm using octane render which is utilizing my four nvidia gpus so uh, Octane uses uh, CUDA cores of NVIDIA GPUs to render. It's like, you know, when I, when I started using it, it was complete game changer because compared to CPU renders, it's like, I don't know, like bazillion times faster. And, you know, with the studio drivers, it's way more stable than before them so it was a great improvement in stability uh i haven't had really any severe crashes in you know in in quite a while so that's great and uh yeah i, I think that it's a really brilliant setup to work on i think the floor is still a little bit too shiny so we can go into specular and kind of like you know tweak it a little bit can also play with the roughness and you can also try to mess around with with a little bit of bump to add some like extra surface detail to it we can grab gradient plug it in here and invert it and now go to like 10% on the lower knot so it's just a very slight you know the higher you go the more it will be pronounced yeah that might be a little bit too much 
No need to go that high. Now, obviously, this is still, you know, there would still need to be a little bit more tweaking done to make it look really nice. But I hope that, you know, for just like a little quick tutorial on how to get started working on textures like this, I think, I hope, it's it's fine. You know, now, now sometimes, you know, if you want to... In have it more pronounced but not crank up the displacement so much you can just export the normal map as well and now we can plug in the normal map as well once again I usually don't do this because normal maps you know using both normal maps and displacement is not very efficient way to like use your resources but you know it can add like this nice sort of you know we can get rid of the bump and we get this like pretty nice look even without going crazy on the displacement but as i said you know we you can you need to go like do a little bit of back and forth between octane and substance designer and sort of kind of you know dial in the values and see what works best. Alright, that's going to be it for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something new. I hope I'll be back with another video sooner than last time, although no promises. Uh, and thanks so much to NVIDIA Studio again for sponsoring this video. It's very much appreciated. Alright, see you. Bye!